So one of the motivations for doing this video is that in kayak fishing, the design of the different kayaks keeps getting wider and wider. Uh, this Jackson Kayak Take 2 has a width of 37 inches. What that gives you is a tremendous amount of primary stability. So much so that I think a lot of people who, whether they're in this boat or a Jackson Big Rig or a Hobie Pro Angler or a native Titan, native watercraft Titan or a Wilderness Systems Recon, I could keep going. They're all really wide boats that are designed for amazing primary stability. And I think people get to a point where they think, I I'm bulletproof, I'm invincible, I can, I can go in anything and I feel completely stable until you don't and when you're in conditions where you where you do flip one of these boats as hard as it was to you know to get it to flip the conditions that you have the really rough breaking waves that are driven by wind or whatever other really rough conditions you're gonna have to fight those conditions to get a boat that's upside down flip back over so you can reboard it that's the point of doing this video and I'm gonna take a look just show you real quick the one tool uh, that's going to help me gain the leverage uh, and then a second one that may help in, in certain situations. So the first tool is right here. This is a, uh, a Yak Attack like a roof rack strap and I have it lashed to the seat frame so it always stays with the boat. What I'm going to do is use this to attach to some part, some attachment point. It's probably going to be that um, this track where I can I can thread it underneath right there when it's upside down, and it's going to go back in that direction. Mind you, the boat will be upside down. I use that strap as leverage to flip the boat back over. This is the second tool uh, that I'm going to use, and it's a it's a paddle float. So the paddle float is an inflatable bag that fits onto one one end or one blade of the uh, of your kayak paddle. I'm going to show you how to use it to uh, to reboard your kayak after you flip and uh, have it be real easy. So as we move into the colder months, one of the most important things a kayak angler can can have is a dry suit. It should be fully gasketed at the neck, at the wrist. It helps to have a relief zipper. And uh, I prefer the, the booty foot in, in, as opposed to the ones that have the, uh, the gasket down at the ankle. I just like having dry feet. Make sure when you zip them, you go all the way down. Check that last little bit of the zipper because that's sort of a unpleasant surprise to realize that you left that last little bit open. All right, that's on there. I am fully waterproof. So the life jacket should go without saying, but I still see people that 
say, yeah, I got my life jacket and it's on the boat instead of on their torso. Get it fully zipped, make sure it's fitted correctly. And in my case, I have the Torquedo magnetic kill switch attached to it. So that when I flip over, the motor cuts off. That's, that's pretty critical. So one of the easiest ways to make sure that you don't get yourself into trouble is to really know your limits in terms of how much wind or, or other conditions like river level uh, you can endure. Uh, this is the, the wind forecast right now for where I'm at on Lake Marburg near Hanover, Pennsylvania. And uh, we got, you know, we got some gusts. They're getting up to 12. That's not, you know, that's certainly for this body of water well within my comfort level. Um, once you get out onto bigger water, uh, the, the same mile per hour uh, could translate to much bigger waves. So I've done these types of videos before, uh, specifically uh, one called Kayak Fishing Basics Stability, where you test the stability of the boat by leaning hard on either edge and just get it far enough and farther and farther until you find that point of no return. That video saw um, just a ton of views. I think it's up over 625,000 um, on paddling.com. The other one I did a little over a year ago was reboarding the kayak fishing skill that can save your life. And this video is, is going to be something that kind of combines the two and then takes it to the next level in terms of showing you a couple tricks, a couple tools that can help you get back in the kayak if you fall out, especially in cold water. So what I'm about to film, I'll, I'll set the camera up on the tripod on the, the dock there. Really two things. Um, First is is getting to know the the limits of stability of the, you know any boat that you have when you get a new boat you want to do what I did in the uh, the kayak fishing basics video called stability uh, where you where you lean into it lean into it and lean into it and I know that uh, my friend Chris Funk who's a uh, pro staff for Jackson Kayak he did this with this particular boat you ought to check out. His, uh, his video on it. I think he did it last week. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. And uh, he actually gave me a couple tips on, on how to get it flipped back over. But the first step is, is learning the limits of stability. And I think no boat is unflippable, but this one may be close. I will eventually get it over. But I'm gonna learn the limits of stability uh, on, on this relatively flat water on a somewhat windy day. Uh, the second part is going to be um, it's going to be flipping it back over using the assist of that the strap that's on the seat frame there. Uh, and I guess there is a third part. I'm going to use the paddle float uh, to get back in. I think I could do it without the paddle float, but and, and I don't really want to um, to fat shame anyone. But I'll be I'll be blunt about it. When you have a big old gut here, and even with all this flotation on the front, that is a barrier to your getting back in the boat. What the paddle float does is it allows you to get some leverage with your leg kicked out onto the side so that you can push your, your gut up above and be able to get back on there in open water. So you do want to practice it in water that's deep enough and right out here is is deep enough that uh that i won't be springboarding off the bottom you don't want to cheat you want to do it in open water uh that has no obstructions because when you flip you don't want to bang your head on something but you also don't want to have the bottom there to help you get back up because that may not be the the situation when you uh when you do it in in real life all right Time to get wet. So this may be challenging to film with the wind keep, you know, keeps pushing me in, but I'll try to stay centered in the frame. Uh, the first thing that you want to do, first thing I'm going to do is take off the kill switch. Uh, it, you know, if I fell out, it would certainly, uh, it would come off. So certainly if you're in rough conditions and you have breaking waves, like say for me, if I'm out on the Chesapeake Bay uh, or up on Lake Erie, and we start having, you know, two and a half transitions to three, three and a half, you approach four foot breaking waves. Um, that's certainly less stable than what I have here. The, the first thing that you would want to do 
is to get your center of gravity low. And in this particular boat, I'm already in the lower seating position, uh, which, which helps a lot. But the stability drill and really learning the, the point of no return on each boat is, uh, is hard. And you can actually practice your, your braces, which is designed to where you push down on the surface of the water, which brings the boat back up underneath you. Um, it's just a good, good thing to know how to do is to perform a, a brace. Uh, I can tell already, I am nowhere near the limits of this going over just because it's such a especially wide. I think what I'm going to have to do is to lean and I'm even pulling, pulling myself over. It's just a super stable boat. I don't, you know, I, I think on this flat water you wouldn't do it on accident, but if you were in, a, in the right conditions with uh, very steep breaking waves, it could absolutely happen.
this a little bit prematurely. This is the, the paddle float. It has two valves, one on either side. I'm gonna undo this. Inflate it and then you tighten it, tighten that down. Let me do the other side. Now, I take the paddle blade, insert it in this, which is basically a, a sock. I gotta open that all the way. And from there, it has a drawstring that I tighten down. The concept is that you slide it in there. I think I'm going to go this way. And it basically creates a, you know, something you can hook your leg onto. Uh, I will tell you, it's, it's important to practice reboarding even without this just to know how to do that so you know the mechanics I have a little bit of a barrier here on on this on the far side and a little bit here with my uh, with my motor lift cleat the anchor cleat and something else I have the the uh, foot control steering slides here if I need to I don't need tools I can pull this off to get it out of the way in fact, I may do that just to have a temporary open area. Get that out of the way. Uh, that's why I don't use I don't use hardware that I need tools to get in because I want this to be clean and open. All right. So my normal procedure for doing this, and I'm going to move out. I, I will tell you that. I didn't angle this completely right to not be cheating. I am touching bottom because I'm pretty tall. Let me move out a little bit so I don't, so I can do this honest. Okay, reach across, kick, get up on top, and then rotate. That time I did not use the paddle float. I had an easier time with it, so. Let me jump back in. Do it a second time and see if I can learn the mechanics of kicking my leg onto that. Again, you, you may or may not need this, but it's good to have it. If I was out in really rough weather with breaking waves, I'd be really happy to have this. to be able to self-rescue, reboard the boat when uh, you're in the worst possible conditions, even with a super stable boat like this Jackson Take 2, which is 37 inches wide. The key is you have to practice it. Knowing how, theoretically, does you no good. You have to go out and practice. Do it. So kayak fishing has, has developed and grown and more people are getting into it. The boats are getting 
increasingly more and more stable, but that's primary stability of the design of the kayak. True stability is only learned. You can't purchase stability. You have to learn it. And you learn it by doing what I just did, leaning on one side, practicing a brace, and then having the confidence to know that if you, if you lean too far and you go in, you can hop back in. Uh, I think too many people get these, and, and there's a great utility in having a, a high capacity, you know, super wide boat that you can put all your gear in, but don't mistake having a wide boat for having stability. You have to learn it, you cannot purchase it, and you learn it by practicing it. So practice reboarding, practice, uh, maybe get the, uh, the paddle float, put a strap, put a roof rack strap on your boat so that you can, you can do this and get out and practice it. Set a date, do that now. Involve your friends, you know, get together with your, you know, call up your fishing buddies and say, look, I'm, I'm going to go learn this. I'm going to get good at this so that when we're out there having our fun adventures in big water, uh, that we can take care of our, ourselves and continue to have many more really fun adventures for years to come. So involve your buddies, set a date for it today, put it on the calendar, go practice it. Stay safe.